guys, come back to my channel. I'm Jim Tamang, and in this video, guys, we're gonna be reacting to Miss Universe 2023, three of the candidates' interview. I've reacted to Michelle D. I guess I've reacted to other interviews, and it's about time that I reacted to other countries as well, especially our Asian queen. So we're gonna be reacting to Thailand, India, and my very own country, Nepal's interview. So two of them are with Adam G, and uh, another one is with Luis Portales. So let's go. Let's check this one out. What they have to say and how well they're you know how well spoken they are so let's go of course we're always happy to have time for you don't worry <laughs> i'm just so so blessed to have you right now as an interviewee how have you been i can't believe you're now you <laughs> oh, no, i can't believe it either i'm so excited and honestly this journey has been so eye-opening especially being here in el salvador a country that i've never been to before and to be completely honest, I didn't even know where it was on the map until Miss Universe announced it. And I did my research mm -hmm. about the food, the culture, the people. And honestly, being here has been beyond my expectations. The people have been amazing, so kind, so friendly. And the food has, of course, been amazing. And the, the scenery of each cultural spot is like breathtaking. So I can see MACC say that you're very much at home here in El Salvador. Yes, I told I told everyone, the fans, that this is my second home now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Speaking of the fans, my gosh, we are all so happy that, Thank you know, you. we have been shipping you in the Philippines. <laughs> oh, shipping? Yeah. I didn't know that was happening. I knew that there was some sort of like, the two pictures together, I've seen a lot of them. Three days we were doing fittings, so yeah. everyone was all over the place because we just kind of like, okay, if you're free, go to this one. It wasn't like in order, yeah. so everyone just had to get everything from the the tick box mm -hmm. done. And um, so Michelle and I just kept passing each other, not not physically, but just like she was over here when I was over there. And then we never actually got time to sit down and talk, but we did say hi. We did like like um, like meet each other. And then we had dinner or lunch next to each other, we spoke. And then finally, when we had rehearsals, um, we were on the same bus. Uh -huh. And she was sitting next to me because she put her bag on the, on the bus chair. And I was like, is somebody sitting there? And she's like, no. So she moved her bag and let me sit there. And then after that, we just kind of bonded. And she's super, super nice, super chill, and yeah. so much fun. Because we, the fans have been making up stories that you can't believe. No, 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 no. Oh, no, is it like that? No drama, both of these no, are like, you know, two uh, very strong contenders uh, for Miss Universe. We are, so. We're actually very close now compared to like two days ago. Yeah. What have you discovered about each other? Because you are not, you even used her drape. Yeah, you even used her drape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, her shirt was very long, so I, as a joke, actually, I was like, can I use your shirt as a blank? And she's like, yes, yes, and just covered it. Um, but she's, she's very, very relaxed, and that's what I love about her. She has this energy that is very calming, and it's not over the top, it's not overexcited, but when you talk to her, you feel calm, you feel... Oh, that's so like, not who I am. I'm steady. so not calm. <laughs> I'm overexcited. She has the same sarcastic humor as me, so I know that if I make oh. a joke, she'll understand it. <laughs> you two are both getting along. Yeah, well, she's so, wonderful. But more than that, you know, as I conclude, more about, I can't believe what an incredible point you guys have been for you. Oh, it's been. Wow. Have you imagined, have you envisioned yourself to be embarking on a successful fashion career? Never, actually. I never thought that. I would even come into pageantry from when I competed the first time. I always saw it as, um, like, not my reality. And I always remember watching and being like, wow, I wonder what it feels like to be one of these girls walking so mm -hmm. confidently in their swimming suit and looking so beautiful, mm -hmm. representing their country. Like, how do they do it? Yeah. And in my, in my heart and in my head, I was like, I could never be. I could yeah. never be like that. But look at you right now. Yeah, and then now I'm like, on the other side of where I thought I was never going to be. Yeah. And I'm that girl that is on the TV or on the screen where maybe there's another girl that's like, I want to be just like her. I want to be confident like her. Wow. And that's what, I, that's what I love about pageantry is that you just have to be yourself. You just have to be confident because there's so many people watching you and using you as an inspiration to not be going to pageantry, but just to be more confident, be more 
motivated and have more fire in their heart to love themselves and to love what they do. I'm loving that you are discovering your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're using your beauty Crazy. to drive purpose. I think it's it's something of my wildest dreams to think that I would even be here uh -huh. representing Thailand, of course. And being an inspiration, like I never thought that there would be people looking up to me and screaming my name and telling, like crying when they see me. Like that makes my heart really? so warm. And it actually pushes me to do better and to be better every day. Crying? That is so true. And you know, as I look okay. back on your past, okay, okay. Well, I'll just shut up. Right now. <laughs> I'll talk after a while. And, and as I research, think about it, yeah, you, you have remained unbeatable in all the pageants, contests that you. Oh, so has she? I didn't know. But I've only joined one. No! <laughs> the, the previous ones, and then Miss Universe Thailand, and then Miss U, and then now Miss Universe. Yeah. But you have remained unbeatable. Oh. So I was just wondering, is there pressure for you to do well or to pay so high in Miss Universe considering that you are unbeatable? I think, of course, there's pressure. You know, there's pressure from the family, pressure from myself, but there's no pressure from my team or, or from my family at all. I think the most important thing is really cliche, but I, I took a baby for myself when I went to my like, previous project that as long as you're with us, that's the only thing that you have to be. Because you're here to represent who you are and the person that's going to represent the brand. Mm -hmm. And if you win because of yourself, you know that you did your best. Yes. They, they love you and they choose you for who you are. And being able to fake it is not something that you can do much, yes. very long. And so, yeah, it's pressure, but the most important thing is to just have fun. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's confidence is something that you can fake until you have it. Fake it till you make it. I do that a lot. And regardless of whether you win or lose, it's our own duty to use our platform to be inspirational or empowering. It's not about the crown. It's about what you do with what, what resources you have. Are you speaking from experience? <laughs> because um, let's face it, you know, you've got, you're a pageant veteran. So with that position, do you consider you are in a very advantageous or disadvantageous position at the moment? I feel like it's 50-50. I feel like the, adva the only advantage I have is that I, just like any other queen that has competed before, is that you know kind of what you need to do or you know how to use your platform or how to engage with your fans. Mm -hmm. But I never see myself as better than someone else or more in more advantage than someone else because of my previous pageant. I never, never, ever thought like that. Whether it was Miss Universe Thailand or here, I always see myself as the same and the equal because we're all here with the same reason, the same purpose, the same platform. And I don't think it would be fair and it would be relatively, sorry, but arrogant almost to come yeah. in and be like, oh yeah, I already won and I'm going to win this again. You know, it's, it's not a positive or healthy mindset to have. And I feel like maybe the disadvantage would be that exactly that, that when people don't really know me, they think that that's what I'm coming in mm -hmm. as. And they think maybe I feel like I'm better or I have... Yeah, I saw quite some, you know, like posts yeah. or comments like, like that. That is so true, that is so true. But I so, think people really judge, you know, like these contestants, these delegates on the basis of few seconds videos and that I feel is uh, no and without even the full context okay they don't know context and they're just gonna pass the judgment like this is that this is arrogant this is rude and all of that no you know you have come you have come I think fans should really stop feeling entitled yes. it's very beautiful I actually remember our first yeah. interview yeah and so you really have come a long way so I wonder you know, now that you're here in Miss Universe, how do you intend to, you know, you said, you know, you want to inspire. How do you intend to make the tra those transformational changes using this platform? You know, Miss Universe is an amazing platform. It's, it reaches so many people of all ages, of all genders, of all jobs and occupations. And for me, I know the impact of social media and it's something that drives us daily. You know, we can say, okay, let's Let's empower through action, of course, let's empower through this, with it to this. But I feel like whatever we do, we need to be able to be relatable, mm. touchable, and at a close distance to what our reality is. And our reality is that we want everything happening at the touch of our fingertips. Yes. So with that, 
I would use social media as a platform to empower, to, to show people that it's really easy to give back to the community. It's really easy to create something for yourself or follow your dreams or take that first step into achieving something for yourself. And yeah. that's what I do with my little steps as well. That's why I called it little steps because everything we do, every opportunity we create for ourselves, any destiny that we have, it all starts with ourselves and how much we want it in our heart. And that first step that we have to push ourselves to do. And with that, I can show people through my actions and through my work with the use of social media because of how powerful it is. How did you, how did you find it in yourself to discover, inspire and now lead? I never yeah, you felt like this. I would be here leading, but then after, there was one moment. I oh, I always talk about this moment because it really touched me so much. Is when I went to donate the water filtration tanks at Nakhon Rajasima yes, province. Yes, your hometown. Yes, and I overheard a story where these kids that we donated the filtration tanks to, they don't have to save their money to buy water for their families to cook and clean and drink anymore because they can get it at school. Yes. And that money that they save, they can go buy books and toys and oh. get the childhood that they need and they, de and they deserve. Oh, and when right. I realized that feeling and I realized how impactful that was through such a little step for us, I wanted everyone to feel that form of happiness and that form of change and that spark in their heart to give back to the community because things like this is something that people forget every day. That there are people struggling, there are people starving, there are people yes. who don't have a bed to sleep on at night. And this is something we take for granted every day. And of course I can advocate for big, big, big things, but if we don't focus on the little things first, how can we make the big things change? Reminds me Very of your true. final answer. You know, as much <laughs> as I want to talk to you longer, I have to cut this. You know, your fans have been voting for you nonstop. Yeah, you so know, amazing. Thank so you. I would like to ask. You know, I just want to tease you. You know, there's a fan vote. So if it were up to you, how would you like to get into the semifinals, through your own merit or through the fan vote? Through my own merit, of course. If I, I feel like everything is through destiny, and whatever you put yourself into, do it with 100% of your heart. And if it's meant to be, it will be. So that means don't hide and vote for her. Me, okay? <laughs> yeah, what if she does it? It wasn't my destiny. At least I love you guys. <laughs> as a backup, yeah. yeah. So on that note, as much as I want to talk to you longer, good luck on your upcoming competition. Thank you. you know, you've come a long way. It's my hope that you. All right, guys. Let's check out another interview um, with Nepal. Um, obviously. Uh, this was uh, uploaded recently. Guys, it's day nine of Miss Universe 2023 here in people, and I'm so excited. Groundbreaking and re revolutionary. Candidate. Exactly. Let's be let's be real here. Hi to her. We say hello to Miss Universe Nepal 2023 JB Jane Garrett. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. It's so finally nice to meet you in person. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you too. Yeah, now that. I'm interviewing her face to face. So, how have you been? I've been really good. I've been really working hard and just keeping myself going, trying to keep the momentum in the competition. You know what? During the mall, during the fan meet and greet at the Multi Plaza Mall, I was really surprised that the whole crowd cheered for you the moment they called your name on stage. <laughs> To do an interview with the host. Yeah, I yeah, I heard that. I, I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm so grateful for that. Like, I'm getting so much support. I'm really grateful. I'm really happy that I'm able to inspire so many people. Mm -hmm. And what's so noticeable too is how your fellow candidates clapped for you, cheered for you along the way. So you oh. must have been yeah. Watch my video footage. You must have been getting along with all of them. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm friends with everybody. I mean, I'm trying to be friends with everybody, trying to talk to everybody. It's I think it's really important because I see them all as my sisters. Mm -hmm. I don't see them as a competition. I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk to you. I see them as my sisters. And I see that we're all going to, to this journey together. So I think it's really important to be kind to everybody and make an effort. And you know, one thing that is very good. different about her in general, in terms of speaking, is what I've seen is that, you know, when we see Philippines, Thailand, they have the usual... Uh, you know how the beauty queen should speak that poise and calm and that you know like uh, the love and compassion in their tone is like reflecting okay 
uh, and how Jade speaks is literally, it's like, you know, how we speak in general, in normal life. Like, that's how I speak, like, oh, no, 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 just say it and it's done, like. So she doesn't, uh, um, what I'm saying is, honestly, she feels very real to me and sometimes I relate to her because that's exactly the way I speak. So, um, as, I, as much as I do agree that, you know, uh, that you ha need to, uh, you know, talk in a certain way, present yourself in a certain way, according to the pageant, uh, um, you know, like, uh, industry and pageant, uh, pageantry thing, um, I like how she's keeping it real, you know, and, and sometimes, I think a lot of times why people take her as rude is because of the same fact that her speaking is this way, and I feel like, I, I don't think it is rude, what I think it is, it is very, uh, real and direct right and some people mistake that as rudeness getting so much you know she uh, doesn't speak like hello yes i've been doing it so much uh, she doesn't speak like this. she's like okay yes i've done that and then <laughs> she sees like that traction on social media yeah yeah there's so much yeah you know, there's so much i saw that too about you oh thank you yeah so do you think you being a curvy woman is not everyone you know not every candidate like you would would have the gumption to join this universe is you know making you an easy standout in the competition yeah i think i am a standout in the competition because of my body the way my body looks and i don't think that's a bad thing i think it's a good thing because like we need variety in exactly. this competition and i think it's really important to show the different types of beauty of the world the different types of body shapes and sizes i think it's really important i'm not promoting obesity i'm not promoting unhealthy lifestyles say it, say I'm, not it promoting starving yourself. I'm not promoting any of that i'm promoting a healthy lifestyle and i'm promoting a normal woman's body so i think it's really important to show tr like the real beauty of women the curves and you know everything about a woman is i think it's so important to show that how is how important is it for someone like you for a beautiful woman like you to be to be represented to represent that real size beauty I think, Miss Universe stage. I think it's so important this Miss Universe stage You've has not been here seen for this seven before. years now and every year it's like the same type of beauty standard the same exactly beauty type, that's why it is know, groundbreaking size zero, and she better slim, make it into tall. top 20 but so many women are not like that most of the world's women don't look like that most of them are curvy most of them are you know, a lot of them are shorter a lot of them are bigger I mean it doesn't matter I mean I think that it's so important to show the different types of women in the world and and I, love that how, I just love how Miss Universe has been inculcating in our minds about the concept of inclusivity mm. in its budget. And I love how it's opening minds mm. to a lot of people. You know, why do you think you know it's so hard for it's not resonating that much on pageant plans in general? Because let's face it, every year when someone like you shows up, you know. You are subject to ridicule and punish. Exactly. Okay, yeah. Probably, you know, I read a comment saying that when you know, like there was videos just like this, and somebody commented saying it seems like Miss Nepal has been eating buff on like buffet on daily basis, and I was like, what the fuck, bro? How someone like you could probably reconcile the disconnect? So, I think because of every year, there's been that continuous you know habit of the same body type. And there's, it's been kind of like brainwashed society that there's only one type of beauty, that there's exactly. only like every woman should look like that. That's the beauty standard, right? And whenever we bring someone different, then they're seen as, you know, not good enough or not fitting that beauty standard. And I think it's really important that we break down that stigma, we break down that brainwashing that society has gotten, and that we show the different types of beauty. Again, not promoting unhealthy lifestyles, yes. but promoting different types of bodies, different body types, because we all have different body types. You have a different body type, I have a different body type, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's so beautiful that God created so much variety, so much diversity in the world, and I think it's important to celebrate that and encourage that. What is so, you know, what is so remarkable about your candidacy is that you're, it's because of your confidence level. I mean, I have been observing you from day one, and I am loving how the way you have been so confident in flaunting your skin, your curves, it's as if love me for who I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Which is good because you're really living up to your advocacy. Yeah, right? it's so important to live up to your advocacy. Practice what you preach. I wouldn't be preaching this if I didn't believe in myself. Uh -huh. Right, so look at her outfit today, you know, it's a balance of elegance and at the same time showing 
what her advocacy is all about. And she's not she's not afraid to show it, to showcase it. Like you're embracing your flaws, your real beauty. And I am loving what I am seeing right now. I'm hoping that it could resonate to all the young girls who might be watching this video. Yeah. Very guys. important. Yeah. So as we talk about body shaming and um, all these um, types of issues that are confronting beauty pageants nowadays, do you think there will come a time that we will see that day where people will be more accepting? I hope that there comes a time that people are accepting. I am getting a lot of positive comments. I am yeah. getting a lot of comments that I'm showing the real woman, I'm showing the real size beauty that I am beautiful and that's really I'm so grateful for that because like like all my comments like most of them are very positive and that they're supporting me and so that's a really good sign from society that they're open-minded that their minds are opening to different beauty types and showing the real woman what a real woman looks like where do you get that confidence to go through to forge through it well, the market honey I wash myself every single day okay. like, <laughs> what affirmations do you always I, I keep telling myself like I've already won. I'm the winner. I'm here to win. I am seen. I am heard. I'm worthy of love. I am beautiful. I, I have to keep saying that to myself every single day. Otherwise, it's not gonna work out. Otherwise, I'll just fade in the corner. Because if I don't believe in myself, if I don't believe that God has my back, it's not gonna work out. It's all for vain. It's all for nothing. And I really have to believe that I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to break down these walls that the society has held for so long. I'm here to bring some change. I've always stood out since I was a child. I used to get bullied so much because I stood out. I was always different from everyone else. But now I see that as my greatest strength because sometimes difference, sometimes standing out is a strength to the world because you're showing what the world is missing. You're showing what the world needs for change, for good change. Oh my God, Adam seems wow. captivated by the answer. You are a transformative leader in your own right. So I really feel like you're coming in at the perfect place at the right time. Thank you. And I just love how you have been doing all these things about your advocacy. You really walk the talk. So for those people who would like to be enlightened about your advocacies, can you enlighten more about them? Yeah, so my advocacy is mental health, hormonal health, and body positivity. And basically, I have been working with a lot of women and men around the world and especially in nepal i have been running some workshops webinars panel discussions about pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome which is a hormonal uh, disease that i struggle with myself and one in four women are actually getting diagnosed with this hormonal issue which causes a lot of weight gain it causes infertility it causes complete hormonal imbalance in your whole body and it's a lifelong issue so I'm really trying to bring awareness about this issue. It also is directly linked to mental illness and mental issues as well, and low self-esteem. So I'm trying to bring all those three topics together and bring awareness and education about this, as well as- I knew about mental health and body women. positivity. I didn't know it in so much in detail. Not loving themselves, who struggle with low self-esteem, low confidence, you know, hating their, hating their bodies. I'm trying to support all the women and all of us come together as a community and create a safe space for women to heal themselves and to live healthy lifestyles. So that's my goal. And if I win Miss Universe, I'm going to keep pursuing that. That is so good. That is She's so very well spoken. I have How to say, you? among all of the candidates that, I've, uh, that we've seen, I think she is definitely on top. Like, if not the top, top two for sure. Like with Manita Dipkota, who went top 10 in 2018. Easily. Oh, you can't your tenacity power. I really had to push myself. Over 10 years, I struggled with mental illness and with hating myself. I would get bullied. I would harm myself. I would cut myself. I tried to take my own life multiple times. And I struggled with a lot of trauma in my family, in my life. And I really had to push through. And God really helped me to get past that breaking point of almost ending my life. That was just a year ago, by the way. It's one mm -hmm. year ago. And I'm here today. And I really think that shows a strong person, a confident person that's gone through hell and has come back. That's where I get all this tenacity. That's where I get all of this um, persistence and this resilience inside me because I believe that I went through all those things for a reason. There's a reason for it. And I came out of that mud. I came out of that hell to be here today to help others, to inspire others, to overcome their issues and to get out of their own mud and their own hell.
Damn, bro. <laughs> it just feels like she gave a Miss Universe answer over there. I am talking to someone like you right now. Yes, because it's it's important. I mean, for you to be able to overcome what you went through, you had suicidal thoughts. You tried um taking taking your life, but look where you are right now. You were able to overcome it. So, to those people who are watching us right now, how do you think um they should give their life? They are facing the same set of challenges as what you have gone through. So the number one thing is to try to find your purpose in life, to not give up. I know it's very hard sometimes because many times I just wanted to give up. I thought I had no purpose. I thought there was no point to life, but I really had to ask God for help. And I had a support system. I had my family with me that kept helping me. And I really had to take therapy. I had to rewire my brain. I think that's the most important thing is rewire the way you think, change the way you think. Because before I had a lot of negative thinking, every single thing that would happen to me, I would take it in automatic negative thinking. But I had to change the way I think, that I thought, and turn it into positive thinking. And I would continuously do therapy, affirmations, journaling. I would process the trauma that I had. Because a lot of times you have trauma that's stuck inside your body and you have to heal that trauma you have to release it so it's very important to take care of yourself be kind to yourself i think it's really important to be kind to yourself and to your body because i mean i don't i don't i mean of course sometimes i'm not going to feel confident in my body you know but i have to accept the fact that this is where i'm at this is where my body is at right now and it's okay i mm. i love myself and it, there's nothing wrong with my body i love my body okay i might have some hormonal issues but i'm working on it i'm going towards a healthy lifestyle. I, I, I am having a healthy lifestyle, and I think that's really important. So that's kind of how I got over this. Yeah. What matters most is you're healthy, mm -hmm. and you're going through the whole grind with so much gusto. So on that note, thank you, thank you so, thank so, you much. so much. Thank you so much for I having me. I wish I could talk to you longer, that but my beautiful. time to yourself, but... Thank you so much. I knew she uh, she was well spoken, are, but I am yeah, even yeah, more impressed one in a million, so after this interview. <laughs> Keep doing that. Thank you. Oh, so sweet. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Miss Jane. See you on my next interview. Bye. All right, guys. So uh, we're also gonna check out uh, the Sweta Sharda Miss India's interview. So let's go. Namaste, <laughs> everyone. I also think she's I'm a really so strong candidate. To talk to you with one on one because I've been following your journey so far. And I know that you're doing great here in El Salvador. Do these people, I mean, I uh, these people as in like, you know, Adam and so these, these are YouTubers too, right? Are they called by Miss Universe Organization or are they going on their own? It's unforgettable yeah. because I have never ventured to the West and me setting my foot in El Salvador already feels like I'm unwrapping a gift because there are so many things to She has know, such an Indian in accent. It's a beautiful and the most beautiful thing about El Salvador is like its people, the warmth of its people, they, the way they welcome us. It's like, it's so beautiful, like it's so amazing, it's, it's so incredible. And I am a Bodhi, I'm a big time Bodhi and my heart belongs to Rajma Chawal. Yes, and so yes it's girl. It's made of rice and kidney beans, it's in India and I Nepal love it. Too. I love it. So like we share the, the same culture basically. Excitement. I have to eat from the sack. Oh my god, they're delicious, aren't they? <laughs> yummy. So like I was very excited to you know explore the culture and also to immerse myself in the tradition. And I am in love with El Salvador. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that you're having a positive experience so far. Yeah. Let me ask you something because we all know that you are a big deal choreographer in India. So everyone has been telling me she is like a celebrity choreographer. So. Yeah. Let me really? ask you, I didn't know that. Been the adjustment from going from the choreography world, being a choreographer, to, to now being, choreographed. being a beauty ambassador for the country? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am very just, I'm very grateful. Yeah. I'm very blessed because when I started my journey, uh, I'm a self taught dancer. I've never, like, uh, despite of uh, never seeing any formal dance training from anyone, I have come this far in my life and I was very inspired by her dance. Oh, oh love her dance. Nas on too. We love you, her dance. And she's one of the main reasons of me standing here today because I have, you know, and also one of one, one of the, uh, you know, common thing me and her nas have is like, I and her nas come from the same homeland. Oh. That is Chandigarh. And we both have Punjabis. 
so I went once I was like I was a backstage choreographer in the same year she did her national pageant. Okay. So I I was watching her. I was like, this is something that I also want to do it. Yes. I want to inspire millions of people who are watching me. I want to spread my message to everyone. And I think pageants like pageants are the main reason of all of for all of us. Uh, uh, by which we can actually amplify our voices yeah. and we can actually connect with the people on a global level. Awesome. So I was like, I want to do it. I have represented myself as a dancer in reality shows. I have gotten a lot of immense love from people. And now it's my time to put scale, you know, aim for you know greater heights. Yeah. And I feel like this is a big step for that. It is indeed. Yeah. Let me ask you something because since you are a professional dancer at this point, right? Do you approach your preparations such as your your walk per se, mm -hmm. the same way that you approach the choreography? Uh, as my you're asking me if that dance would help me in my uh, pageant, right? No, let's say like when you have to learn how to walk, it's like the, the runway walk for beauty queens. Mm -hmm. Do you learn the steps and the turns and all of that the same way that you approach choreography? I know, I know. So for me, dancing has really helped me in learning the, you know, walking part, especially yeah. the walk. Because uh, because of dancing, I, I was able to, you know, give that pauses, give that those expressions, yeah. uh, give that, you know, that boldness when we walk. Yeah. And also, it has helped me to, you know, give my personality all out there. Yeah. Like, this is who I am as a person. So, I think everyone who is walking on the ramp, uh, they should reflect their own self. And that's what I am doing and that's what I have learned. There is no correct work. There's no correct, you know, answer. There's always like, you just have to be yourself. yourself yeah. You have to just, you know, just out there, like, you're, you have to... Be yourself is something that you okay. hear a lot in pageantry, right? Like, be yourself, yes, be awesome. yourself, Very be the real you. Okay. Embrace who you are. Yeah, just be yourself, own it. <laughs> I imagine that you must feel a lot of pressure. I mean, historically speaking, India has done brilliantly in pageants. So how do you manage all of that expectation while you're here? <laughs> So right now I'm carrying uh, the hopes of Indian, the 1.4 billion people with me and the responsibility of continuing the legacy that Harnal Divita yeah. last year they have created. And, last year uh, India had placement, I'm not sure. Like everyone has their own journey, I have my own journey, I'm representing not just myself now but yeah. I'm representing myself as an like, ambassador of my country. Yeah. So I am very emotional, I feel very blessed, very proud because I am living a dream of like of every girl in India dreams of. Yeah. So not sure every girl, but yeah, <laughs> a lot of girls are there. Diversity and the unity of India. So I can't wait to do that, and I'm already doing that. I'm yeah. teaching some of the Indian words to everyone out here, I and they're loving it. I, saw I, I can you speak also. fluent Hindi, yeah. okay? Let's be, let's be like fully honest. You're doing incredible, and I'm so everything proud of you. Everything we have, like all of the, we, I don't think Indians can speak Nepali properly, but we speak because we have a lot of influence from the shows, the films, mm -hmm. everything. I know most of the actors, I know serials, Indian serials, I watch Big Boss, my favorite actress ever is Priyanka Chopra, no, so everyone. hell yeah. I'm proud of you. I would like to ask you, you know, <coughs> I don't like to ask girls for any hints about their wardrobe because of course it's, it's a surprise I for them. Know. I really want everyone to watch, well, you know, wait for it yeah. because it's gonna be worth it. Exactly. Wardrobe as in like what they're wearing in preliminary. Okay. Don't tell me anything specific, but <laughs> where's inspiration? Where are we getting stuff from? So, what do you want to know about my wardrobe? There are two, three outfits that I'm gonna wear. Okay. Yeah. So what? Uh, what is like okay. that one outfit that you are excited for? Is there oh. maybe? Let's talk about maybe national costume. national costume. Is there like a theme? A theme. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little brief about it. So I'm representing the modern Indian women. Okay. Who is strong, who is bold, uh, and she knows what to do in her life, and she's unstoppable. Okay. Wait, so, so is she like, a, uh, like being somebody, a, a modern Indian woman? Okay. Baby, from one to ten, how excited are you? Me, hundred. <laughs> awesome. I love how she's quirky and playful. I'm gonna just give you a hug and wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was an amazing interview. Of course. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. the process. Bye, everyone. Alright guys, that'll be for this video. We watched three of the interviews and just yesterday we also checked out a Philippines interview and I guess after seeing everybody's how they talk, uh, how they present themselves, I think uh, I do have, you know, like a list of like who spoke the best and it's not just about, it's about the content of what they spoke and the relatability and 
I guess also the choice of words, definitely. Um, so if I had to like, you know, like have a pe like list of people who really were well spoken, I think Nepal definitely her interview had an impact on me. I learned a, a lot about her. I learned a lot about issues, her advocacy. And I think the, the one interview among all the interviews that I've seen, the one where I learned the most new things was hers. So I guess I would definitely put Nepal on front. And I guess uh, uh, Michelle D is not very back. You know, like it's like very close call. Uh, I love how authentic Michelle D feels. Like she has that, you know, like mixture of everything. She's quirky, she's fun at the same time. She's very calm and she's very serious. So it's like mixture of everything and it's just put in one person. And I love that about her. I guess after that, I really liked India. I mean, all of these four women were amazing. Okay, so it's uh, like, you know, like it just feels like, you know, just because she's in third doesn't mean that she's bad. But, you know, like uh, it was about the content and uh, it also depended on the questions that were, they were asked. So in this interview, there was not much serious questions, but yeah, I loved her quirkiness. I love how she was, you know, like she felt like relatable, like those, you know, normal Indian girls, Indian girls next door, a kind of a vibe she gave me. And I really enjoyed that. And after that, Thailand. Thailand also spoke really well. Um, at times, I just felt a little bit of disconnect, but I guess overall she did well. So guys, that would be my thing. But who? This is just my opinion. Jeevan, one out of seven billion people opinion. And it doesn't have to matter much. Okay, some people, I don't know why they take it to their heart just because I said something. I say something that is my opinion. It is not a judge's ruling that it is going to be the universal truth. So you guys can have a different uh, and even the exact opposite opinion please let me know who was your favorite and who uh, spoke well according to you in the comment section meet you guys in the next reaction video bye, -bye.